Good morning, everybody. The following is an interview between myself and Miles Kingdon, who I had the honor to do a clinic with up in Lillooet just recently, which is an absolutely beautiful place here in British Columbia, on something that is way out of my wheelhouse and comfort zone, which was ranch roping. Now, ranch roping is nothing I've ever done. I've done a bit of roping but never with actual cows, which we were able to do. My interview with him was by my request, as I really wanted to sit down and talk with him as I'd been to a previous clinic with him locally here, and I really liked what he had to say. And he did me the honor of saying yes, he would be happy to sit down and talk about some of his ideas, some of his methods, and I found it to be enriching probably the best word that I could use. I was very appreciative of his time due to that I could get and feel so much more of the horsemanship that I think is very effective, that he has found to be very effective as he has years and years of experience out on ranches. He's been doing it most of his life. He spent most of his life with horses. And as such, he is a very wise man. I encourage you to watch this interview. I hope you enjoy it. I know I got a lot of my time with him and I hope you do too. And uh, without further ado, Miles Kingdon of Miles Kingdon Horsemanship. And I'll put a link to his Facebook page in the description below. Well, I gotta say that I really appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your day to chitty chat because I have a pile of questions and thoughts, but... Usually it's, it's funny because this time of the day, my brain is on overload. <laughs> yeah. But it's really relaxing here. This is a beautiful place. I just love this, this, uh, this Lillooet country. It really is a, a good feeling here, isn't there? It is. Peaceful and the sun's shining all over and it's so pretty. It's not a tough deal sitting here and talking about stuff. No, I mean, even when we were eating dinner last night, just a gorgeous location. Oh, sitting on the boy. deck. Yeah. The house it's, itself and then the scenery outside of that. I can't believe it. Nice people, so many nice people here. Yeah. I knew there was a lot of nice people here before. Uh, And I always wanted to come back and just touch base with them. And it was 30 years till I could come back here and do a, a day workshop two years ago. And it was funny because it was the it was just like today. It was just perfect. It was just really the energy was so good, the people were so good. Everybody got something. And I couldn't help but pass something good on, you know. Anyway. Today one, was a very successful day. This I mean, was a great weekend. Yeah. Everybody grew a little, learned a little. I think I learned maybe more than anybody because I don't know anything. Interesting but, because I, I, I think I learned at least as much if not more than anybody. Why? Since, because since I've started helping people with their horses, I've started noticing more little things from the outside looking in. And it's really interesting how you thought you had things figured. I could ride the horse. I could always ride the horse. And I tried so hard to figure out how to teach. I, I, can I tell you a little story here? Any story you'd like, my friend. I would love to hear anything you have to say. Okay. I was teaching down on the Lower Mainland. And, and I really, the whole time that I was teaching, I was still always kind of wishing that I was on a long trot back to camp. Because that's where I'd spent my life. A long trot out or a long trot back. And uh, I just felt so uncomfortable trying to, 
I mean, I was dealing with people who knew so much about biomechanics and kinetics, and I and I, I didn't know those words. I didn't know the right things to explain about biomechanics, and I and I still don't know as much as a lot of people about how to explain that. I can explain in my own words how the horse works. And I've been told, well, you already explained biomechanics. So, okay. So it's working. I called my dad. He was still alive. And uh, he asked how it was going. And I said, it's, uh, yeah, I just, I think I'd, I think I'd like to go back to the outfits. It's where I fit. I spent a lot of life, a lot of time training. That was my boot camp, and that was my life. And he said, well, you can do what you want. He said, I, I've worked with, a, I love a horse. I've worked with a horse all my life. He said, you more than me. He said, you were born and raised on a horse. And I just was always happy that, but you were doing what you were doing and there was somebody like yourself for the horse to come to that would give the horse another chance and they'd give human another chance. And that's the part that he loved about the horse was what the human could offer him. And hmm. so I started thinking about the horse rider duo, that team. The horse is the the horse is the only bilingual person, if you will, in this in this in this team, this duo. They've had to learn the last guy's lingo. They've had to learn the guy's lingo before. Now they've got to learn your lingo. And and we don't we don't climb on the horse and ride the horse and understand how, what he gets from this, what he, what he understands, how he understands to work with us. And, uh, and so I started focusing on each horse and rider. And because of some, I guess a couple of bad days, everybody's got them. I, uh, I have had, Empathy is one of the emotions that we really can groom. And we don't think about that. At least I didn't. And I've been able to look at what people were missing or lacking and what the horse really needed. And I could kind of put a couple of things together and, and help the human out. To find empathy or with a method? Through empathy, I found a method to make it work. Would they absorb that idea that you were teaching empathy? Would you try to teach that, or did you teach Absolutely. A Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's sort of a, a way for a person to actually discover more tools. Yeah. Then, in the end. It is. Yeah, it is, because... Every time somebody figures they got something right with the horse, the horse will be busy, and it's for a reason. They're trying to tell us something. I can see it now. And I couldn't see it at one time because I was busy riding. I, had, I spent all my life with the wind in my face. Hmm. That's not a bad thing. It's a pretty good description of freedom itself. Hmm. I, I, I think it's, uh, I've tried to explain in these two books that I've written and the third one that's coming out, it, how I see freedom. Freedom is God-given, as is feel, as is empathy, as is the ability to stop and observe. And that in itself is one of the greatest keys
You know, the words that you speak generally convey the idea of empowerment. So to feel a sense of freedom would mean that you feel empowered. If you can feel empathy, you must be empowered. Would you say that there's... That's a great freedom. I have been humbled involuntarily, as a lot of people have been. All I can do is speak from my own experience. And uh, through being humbled and having to explore my own darkness, everybody's got it. My own step into the light, my own metamorphosis, not only shedding the old skin, but trying to figure out how, what the new skin should look like even. I've prayed to God so many times to just help me find a way. And so that's why I wrote in that book that the horse has, um, has taken to me into so many battles, uh, be they physical, many physical, big battles, mental and spiritual in a big way and brought me home again. If you were to rate those three, which one would run at the top? Physical, mental, spiritual? Spiritual. That's number one? Yes. What's number two? I think I know the answer. Yeah. Mental. Yeah. If we were to work with horses in that order, could we be more effective? Where, so we each have our own worlds that we live in. I see and watch, or I do. You see and watch and do. I observe a lot of physical in people who work with horses. Mm -hmm. A lot of physical, too much physical probably. In my mind, too much physical. And the idea that we, we wander into the spiritual and mental aspects of both ourselves and the horses, would that be, would it be accurate to say that if people did that a little bit, I don't know if it would be more in your world. I don't know if people already do that, but would you say this would be a good idea if you felt you were doing a lot of physical, maybe wander into this area and see where you go. What do you think? Does that make sense? It does. That's a big rabbit hole right there. <laughs> I don't know how far down a rabbit hole we want to go, but I mean, at a surface level, at least that can make sense. If I'm, let's talk about this workshop that just finished. Hmm. It's a fantastic workshop, by the way. Excellent. There was so many things mechanically to deal with. Kinetics. Mechanics. If I could name this workshop anything else from Rats Roping Workshop, it would be the setup. Yeah, you said that a lot. You talked about it a lot. And the setup isn't just about how I set myself up for a shot. What about setting Herman up for a shot? What about setting you up for a shot? Which you did. And I could sit there and let them, because they need to throw a few loops. They need to fuel, throw a few loops. Because they need that for themselves. They become frustrated with a horse and they want to know what to fix, do to fix it. So I start with a horse. Because it goes back to that old Spanish saying, to ride the bridle horse well brings you close to God, to be close to God helps you ride the bridle horse better. And it doesn't mean a denomination and it's not a, 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 about a scripture as such, but it is sacred. 
there's something more sacred. Can I put my hand on my horse and have them feel that as one of God's creatures and say, it's all right, this is, this is good enough. We need straightness, but we need something still to begin with. Why does that work? You did that a lot with a lot of people where you said, including myself, you said, put your hand down. Just put your hand down and just find us. You talked a lot about center, your legs, but a lot of what I picked up, and of course everybody has their bias. I suppose this might be my bias, where touch and weirdly as it may sound, sort of a transfer of energy of just, it's okay, be quiet. That's, and that is what it is. That's how you yes, it is. set it up for a person. So when you talk about setup, I think you talk about a lot of things. I think you talk about setting up for a shot, but also like I tried to talk about before, setting up for a situation that will make a situation that will make a situation. That's right. So way back of just, okay, calm down. I set up that herd so that they're facing the right way. Hmm. I set my horse up so he can be still when I need him to be still. If I don't wait, the horse can't wait. If my hand is busy directing him with them signals up and down and up and down with them coils in my hand, <laughs> every time I move that hand, that horse is getting a signal, he's not sure why. That's really hard, you know. <laughs> it's really hard to separate out your hands and your legs and your seat and your eyeballs and your ears and you're wondering what's going <laughs> this. And this hand has to shut up. It has to just stay really quiet. That's actually quite hard. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So how, how would you, if, if I were to say a key item might be that I think you did do, is how would you set somebody's brain up to, to say, talk to this hand very first? And if, am I right? Is that a correct thing to say? Or is there something before that? Detach the rope. Detach the thought that I'm going to rope. Oh. Just be with my horse from this side. Lock my elbow by my side. So that's a physical thing. Where yes, you, it is. You lock that into your muscle memory. I need to pull this arm up as high as it's going to go to give me enough length of rope to feed that spoke for that motion. And then leave it there. And it needs to begin with that. And it is, it is very, it is, it does. When you think about what the horse is uh, getting from that, it's not just that moment, but it's moments like that, millions of them, that make it something sacred. It's just a relationship that I have with my horse chance when he can get so upset with me and want to get out of there. But he knows I need him and he'll stay still for me and he'll keep trying for me. And when I get out of there, he doesn't hold it against me. He comes up to the back of my palms where they want to know you. That's where they want to know you better. And it's, I really, I have a lot of respect for him. He, him and I, we, we have words, you know. <laughs> But the thing yeah. is, I just can't do anything but say, you know, he's right. I got to, I got to consider what he's feeling. Empathy is one of the greatest things that I've ever, one of the greatest muscles that I have worked on. Um, hmm. And f it's like this. Um, I wrote my first book, I can't recall how I wrote it all really, but freedom has always represented itself in many forms in my life. It's beckoned me from the top of a ridge. It's had many racy forms. A horse. I've had the wind in my face all my life because of something like that, because of freedom. 
and it's dropped me into situations where I was really glad to have reverie, moments of reverie, to bring me back out of that room when freedom would entice me back up there to try again. It's like love. I mean, you can't just quit on love because it didn't work for you once. I'm powerless to, 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 to try again. I have to try again. And it's like hmm. these people that are here. I've had workshops where I didn't have as much success, but out of each one, there'd be one or two people that really, it really hit home with them. And they did talk about hope like you did. Hmm. And hope was important. That's what they saw. And if people get hope out of that, that is why I'm doing this. I can make money at a lot of different things. Good grief, I can go cut firewood and sell firewood if I wanted to. <laughs> I could just ride somebody else's horses and stay at home and not deal with the people. But the people is the icing on the cake. And there's no coincidence why I met all these people. Everybody I meet, I just think to myself, wow. Just think of the things that I've left behind with all these people. And I know they're going to help somebody else. And that's going to make them get better. They're going to see how a horse's feet are moving and they're going to say, I, I, I know this. And here's why. And they're going to get it and they're going to help some other kid. Or it doesn't matter, kid, older person, whenever they pick it up, it was the time for them to get it. Age doesn't have a, 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 a preference. It's not age specific. Mm -hmm. When you get it, it was time to get it. Hmm. Done. Like it. Mm -hmm. Run with it. Mm -hmm. And I just know that everybody here is going to be helping somebody else. And I'm really good with that. When you were talking earlier, you, you mentioned that in this clinic, you noticed a lot of things, probably some of the most in a way. And it made me curious in my mind, when you say that, do you refer to all round general? Is there very specific things? Could you label them good or bad? Or is there something that you learned that you thought because you said you learned a lot and you noticed a lot, you observed a lot and got a lot. And it really made me curious as how you think about that as a teacher. Do you also maybe become a student by being a teacher? I think you have to. I've, I've realized a long time ago that because I realized how little I need, I knew. Every year that I, I got older, I would have rode how many more horses? And the more experience I had, the more I realized how much there more there was to know. And there, everybody here brought something to the table. And I suspect that because it was on that level here, I will see more at the next workshop. Hmm. It's titillating. It's stimulating. Mm -hmm. And I can't help it, but I see people like little Mandy there or John. Well, I don't know very much in, and that's all I ever do is this and that and the other. But their horse was still and waiting for them because they were still and watching. They were observing. They were absorbing. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And the horses <clears throat> picked it up. And I didn't have to teach him how to hold the horse still. So when one, when one were to sit down and concentrate hard on a, on a thing, then their horse also might sit down and think, I better get quiet because this person's really quiet doing a thing. They are a mirror of everything we put out. A horse is a mirror of so much that we put out. If we're quiet and we watch, it doesn't mean that the horse is going to get better at turning and spinning and become the top calf roping horse or a top bridled horse. Mm. But he's going to be a happy horse because he's got the time to sit and think and wait. 
If I don't wait, the horse can't wait. Do we teach patience or do we learn oh, patience? We can definitely learn patience and by, by practicing it, it affects everything around us. Are there horses that learn, they need to learn patience by nature or nurture? That's a weird um, question. It, Meaning that some people know, by, by, some people build horses up and they're just busy horses. I've got a horse over here, a nine year old horse that is a you know he would ch he trained to chase cans. And I've got a horse at home who was trained to do, just be a nice guy, and accept a bridle, and do some nice turns, and get soft, and pick up people on these rides when they're getting troubled. So he'll do the same thing Chance will. But he hasn't had the opportunity to mature through work. And mature through work is a big deal, whatever that job is. But the horse will always get better realizing what the purpose is. And they were so adaptable that whether the human is concise and clear with their messages and their signals or not, the horse will figure something out. And that's the beauty of horses. That's what I see in them as being the, multi, the bilingual partner in this union. Hmm. And if, if, we can, if we can just kind of <laughs> ride that horse from where the horse is, like mm -hmm. Peter used to say, ride the horse from where the horse is. Instead of climbing on and saying, well, this is what I know and I need you to do this. How would one discern where a horse is? Because that's kind of subjective. Okay, let's say I'm starting a colt. <laughs> I am starting a, a, an Andalusian colt, and he's five now. And I'm going around the round corral. I started in the middle, and I wanted to go to the left. And I asked him to go to, I, I started my turn to the left, but he started going that way. I changed it to go with him. It's very much like a dance. If I pick some lady to come dance with me, and I said, would you dance with me? And I started yarding her this way when she thought she was going that way, and I yarded her this way when she thought she was going that way. I think she's gonna hide the next time I come looking for a dance. If you're yarding her, it sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and yet we do it with a horse. So the horse wants to go to the right. So I just say, well, yeah, fine, let's go this way. This is the signal to go to the right. I'll go along with that. It's not my choice. But he needs to know the signal to go that way. If he's going to the right and I'm trying to change that, he's thinking, oh, good, this is the signal to go to the right. It's rough. And from that point on, that's what he can expect from me. So if I go with that, I lift my hand, I go that way. So. Let's say I'd like to go back to the left afterwards, or maybe I would like to go to the right. He's straightened out, and he wants to go that way. I go that way. This is a signal to go that way. It's not a bad deal. No. It's not that, well, I can only go the way the horse wants to go. I have to give him the signals that I would need if I was going that way. Pretend it's your idea. What's wrong with that? He wanted to go that way. I'll just make him believe it was mine. He wants to go that way. I'll just make him believe that it was my idea. So when I change and go that way, he recognizes it, and now he'll dance my dance. And it does work that way. You and find I that's don't a, have to fight about anything then. And that's a more effective way to work with horses, in your experience. Yeah, because they got to figure out them signals to start with from someplace. Once they know the signals, they'll go with it. Whether they like it or chance, he didn't want to be in there today. You said that quite a few times, and I, not nearly as in tune as you would be, thought, eh, maybe. But you picked that up from what? What, how do you think that? Every time I turned to come this way, he had his back end under him, powered up to charge to the gate. I want out of here now. Oh, I see what you're saying. You bet. So each time you would offer the gate, he'd be all over it. And each oh. time you didn't offer a gate, he would struggle, maybe. He still wouldn't do what I needed to do. But it was different. But he'd say, yeah, but let's go. Yeah, but we could go that way. You know, and he'd want to turn that way. 
So I'd pick him up and I'd say, we need to wait here. And he'd look back, he'd want to nibble on my boots, anything. Try to pretend this is not, I'm not here, I'm not here. But I needed him for a job. He did it because I never let him get in a wreck. I never got him troubled over something that I needed. Did it get busy? Did he get alarmed when them cattle hit the ground when we were tied off to him? Yeah. Sure he did. Yeah, but he stayed. But he stayed with me. He really stuck with you. By the end, you couldn't time to a fence. He just went, wanted to go with you. That's right. Now, that kind of thought process is really appealing to me because I think it's, it's much faster than, I mean, we talked about this in the truck a lot maybe because I keep talking about it, but uh, I think it is a much uh, more effective and expeditious way of, not only for the long, but the short term of working with a horse to, with the purpose, one of the purposes, main purposes of being that you want them to like you. So when you talk about meeting a horse's, or meeting a horse halfway, they want to go one way, you're like, ah, cool, let's go that way. And you give all the signals from beginner to advanced to have that thing happen. The horse would be, well, he did what I wanted. And you're thinking, I'm doing what you want, but you're doing what I want. Mm -hmm. And as you keep building those signals, because there's just, it's going to be a series of patterns. Yes, there is. There's lots uh, of variables in cow work. Yeah. But um, if we were to consider turn left, turn right, go stop, just the basics for now, mm -hmm. let alone all that, what the feet should be doing, because I love that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. But you take advantage of the horse's thoughts in a way that, I don't even know if take advantage would be the right way to put it, but maybe... Um, I use it to my advantage. If yeah, that's what but... he wants to do. I got a horse at home, hmm. Memphis. He has not matured through work. He's going to be 14 years old. He's had a tough time at a branding a week ago, two weeks ago. Uh, he just felt like, well, should I go right? No, I'll go straight. Well, should I go left? No, I'll go straight. And I had to really ride him through them spots because he's not matured through work. But because I'd never had him, gave him trouble over stuff. I never got him in a wreck over stuff. I did the best that I could to keep him out of a wreck. When you get out there doing a job on horseback, business picks up, stuff happens. Boy, I see that, yeah. And if your timing is good and you can foresee it, you'd rather be ahead of the game than behind the game. So when Chance over here, who's been through that with me mm. and I could give him a direction. He didn't like it, but he full and well knew that it wasn't going to hurt him because I asked him for it. And so now I can choose the pattern. I can choose the path. I can give him the signal. And he says, okay, I don't care for it, but you bet I'm with you. There's no hesitation in time from the message, the signal to his muscles, the muscles that are doing it, because he's not tight. What makes him not tight? How do you get that? He's soft because he feels comfortable. He's safe? okay with it. Would you say safe is a yeah a attribute to that? Yeah. What? How would? How do you get that? I don't. I've stopped trying to control their moves with a control bit with a spur. Pull them here and spur them there. Pull them here, spur them there. I don't want to take something that I have learned that really makes a lot of sense to me is don't take diagonal balance away from the horse. What would you, what, sorry, what's diagonal the, balance? If I see the eye and the jaw going to the turn to the right, it's enough. If I pull the head way over here, I load the weight over the shoulder, the back, the, the diagonal hind has to do the, is going to step out first. Yeah. Okay. And if he was out there, he wouldn't do it that way. I've watched him. Many people have watched him. You watch a horse out in the flat and you see how they do them things. We had the human and we pull the horse 
and you know the horse you know we're riding off and the horse is trying to keep up with us we ride off and leave the horse behind when we're trying to catch that cow <laughs> I really liked your saying. I got to cut you off, but I loved the saying that you said, where you explained that and you explained your horses where it's like, hey, I can take you there. It's cool if you really want to go over there. But the person was already way ahead. Yeah. I really like that. They're pulling and they're leaning over there. They loaded everything up on the side of the horse, the side that has to reach. Ah, the side that has to pick up and go. Yeah. And so if we just give them a signal and ride with the feet, we give a signal from here forward through the neck, feathering the neck, that Hackamore's already doing his job. Hmm. We start pulling over here and smacking that horse's side of the face with that Hackamore. Yeah, it's frightening. And it'll work a time or two, and then they get stiff, and you gotta go back to whatever, snaffle or whatever you're using, control bit. It's not the way it was designed to use. Hmm. The same thing as the spade bit. Hmm. They're designed on signal. Hmm. I lift, the horse is ready to go this way, wait for the feet to go, and my body rides them through. I lift to go this way, wait for the feet to go, and my body rides them through. We've got to learn to go with the feet. Pay attention to the footfall. Go when that horse's feet are going, because I'm connecting myself to his feet, hands, body. So now he's getting four signals, a core, shift the pelvis, my thighs, maybe my calf. But the first ones for the feathering of the neck, don't worry about the bozelle, it's already doing its job. If I'm lifting this, it's already working. When you say the bozelle is doing its job, I hear you every time you say it, but I don't understand it. Well, if you watch somebody lift them reins and they're looking at that rein feathering the neck and it's almost as if you want to lift that shoulder, how we use our hands is directly relevant to how we draw that energy through the horse's body. But how does the bozal do its job then? So if I lift, it's like this. It twists. Now it comes on this side of the face. It's contact here. And if I go to the left, it rolls on this side of the face and says, go this way. And the shoulder's already lifting to go. And so you're saying, sorry, I, because I really want to understand this. I really like the way you're putting it so far. And I, I understand where you started way at the beginning where you said people talk about the biomechanics and kinetics of a horse. And I think that's probably where they're referring to. Mm. But if I were to try to grasp this from my perspective, as you say, when you go to just touch it, when you go to feather it on the neck, it twists that bozal. So instead of doing any pulling, you rely on that Feather and twist, a light twist. If I lift and I feather that neck, the reins are coming up the neck, the bull's owl's already lifting and it's turning on the face slightly. Hmm. So it's turning on the face like this and the face needs to go this way. It's already doing its job. So we don't want to pull. No. At all. No. But we, you, we can, it can be effective, but it's a poor tool. How does that work? Because I think back on my own writing and I feel like I've made a lot of mistakes based on, definitely based on the way you're taught. Yeah, let's, let's, thank you. Based on the way that you're referring to it. And I think, oh man, I think I've, I've failed your class. There's the horse's face. Yeah. If that heel not lifts, look what's happening with that nose button. So it sits on the left-hand side of the nose. On the side of the face that's telling it to go this way. In the left jaw. And you drop as soon as it goes. Oh, you talked about the fulcrum. Can you explain that as well, please? Yeah. So my friend explained this very well to me, and I, and I use them words a lot, this being the fulcrum, the, the hanger. Yes. And if... If that was to be hanging back here, it would be balanced. The drop would be slower. We want it to drop? We do want that to drop. Why? Because if I ask that horse to go this way, mm. and it comes like this, and the face starts coming, it needs to drop. Because it's already, that tells him. If I'm asking the right front to come up, and I lift, and that right front shoulder starts coming up, 
And I just want it to come up a little bit, just to know. So he knows that I'm talking about this foot or this foot. And I lift that ring and I feather that. The bozelle comes up. As soon as it comes, I want to release the, the, the heartbeat that it happens. So he knows precisely it was this foot. He gets it. Oh, this one. So, it, so if that left front is further ahead and I'd like to bring it back, I know the right hind is going to be the next one to move. Diagonal balance. If I lift the left front and I wait for the next one to move, it'll be the right hind. And I release on the right hind. Okay, so I lifted the left front. The right hind was the next one to move. But I released when the right hind lifted. I need to lift as soon as I can. If this is balanced, my, my release is going to be late. The fulcrum being further, further ahead and the weight of the heel knot makes that release pretty quick. I can release on the signal at the time he lifted that right hind foot. Now the right front and the left hind are ahead. I can lift the right front. That left hind's moving first because I released on the hind foot the first time. I can't tell you how many horses I've done that with over the last several years, and it works all the time. You release on that hind foot once. The next hind foot, the next time you signal a front foot, the hind foot is moving already. It is very similar to, uh, Peter said to his nephew, you watch Miles when he rides away his horse's back feet are leaving the same time he does. Well, who would even think to ask that question or to look for that? And a lot of it had to do with, I was rolling over their hawks. So the horse was engaged over their hawks when I left, the back feet left the same time the front did. Because he was leaving, the hind feet were leaving from a place of engagement. Mm. So you can teach your horse that same way. Give a little turn before you leave like loading them up before you leave, over their hawks before you leave. Yeah, I've heard that before, a lot. Okay. <clears throat> so it's very, this is so relevant to the signal mm. because as soon as that muscle starts lifting, that foot, that forearm starts lifting, you've got to release on it. So he knows here, ah, it's this foot. He's talking about this foot. You must drive you nuts to watch us ride then, because I don't think I went that far. I think about it as best as I can, but I think in times of trouble, meaning sort of a bit more of a stressful situation, as in trying to rope a cow, first time ever, I don't think that I really thought anything of that whatsoever. Oh, neither did I. Yeah. Ray it's Hart hard. said to me, to us one time, he said, When's the left front hitting the ground? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what does it matter? But it does. And the more I started paying attention to these stupid little things, I realized how important it really was. Left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left. The four beat of the walk. Diagonal balance, diagonal balance. This is a muscle memory thing then. I don't think there's much chance that you can think about it while thinking about so many other things. Humans are terrible multitaskers. What do we do when we're riding down a trail for home? When I was a kid, I always wondered, can I get my horse to go that side of that cow pie by leaning him and he's gonna catch me or staying out of his way so he can lift and go? When I was riding bareback, I knew full and well where that was lifting from. It was lifting right underneath me. And if I thought if I leave over top of it, he's got to lift me too to get me out of the way to go. We're trotting, rising and falling, rising to the trot in a round pen. We rise and fall with the side of the wall, the right shoulder. We come up and go down and come up and go down. Is it to facilitate motion of that shoulder or to get out of the way of that hip? If you have to go to a canter, if you can get a canter rather than a lope, and it has to reach further, has to come up higher, reach further. So you're out of the way of the hip. 
its hind quarters. And yet every time we pull and use control on a horse's face, they get, oh, they get tight. And we've lost soft feel. Hmm. And the shoulders do get loaded up. And the first foot that's going to move is a diagonal hind. And I need him to load over his hocks to roll over the sweep. If that cow's coming out of the herd and I step ahead to do a turn, she's already seen that forearm reach. She still thinks she can get me. And if my horse is really good, I'll probably get her. But he's got to be good. If I roll over my hocks, if I step back with the inside hind to sweep, I'm already on an angle to cut off her flight path. And she knows it. And my horse doesn't have to fly around and be fast anymore. It's relevant. And we need to know what's going on with the feet and we need to release when they start responding. And that's the primary place of communication. And now the horse is not the only bilingual one in this union. That's how I see it. And, and many others do too. All the people who are really good know what their horse's feet are doing. In whatever discipline in this horse industry, there's many good ones. In the clinic, you paid me a compliment and said, nice turn. Can you tell me why? Do you remember? Yeah, because you picked up the rain. And for whatever reason, whether you weren't sure how to get it faster or you didn't want to get it faster, the horse's foot lifted up and then the other one crossed over and, and you kind of let it go when he started going. So that outside foot didn't feel inhibited by pressure on the neck and it was able to reach further. The second time it really crossed over and the back end, the inside hind stepped back to facilitate that turn. It was a nice turn. I mean, it felt nice. I'm not saying it was. You felt like you were it, turning but, here yeah. rather than here. Yes, that was the purpose yeah. of that. Yeah. And that's how the cow turns. And that's why they can beat us. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a, that was a, it, you made me think when you said that, I thought, oh yeah, it felt good, but then you said something, I thought, well, why? And I tried to break it down a little bit in my head about what exactly had happened underneath me. I know what I did, because I'm me. Uh, but I don't know, I don't, when you talk about how important it is to understand all the feet, and Herman and I have talked about that you talk about it, uh, I start to think about it a lot more. You have practical purpose for it because you're catching cows. Yeah, there's, I guess there's always been that. Um, I've always had a job for a horse. Yeah. And I really liked that they could turn fast. They could stop fast. I could rope them calves. There's a lot of us out there. But at nighttime, I think to myself, and I always have. And there's other guys like that. I know Bruce Sandifer is like that. He's always thinking about what he could do better and there's many people guys and girls there's a lot of girls that lay awake at night and i know they talk to me about it yeah me too i think about what i could have got to make it better so the horse wasn't tight could he be fast without having tension could he be fast without having anxieties here is another balance there's several balances and there's the one that's another one. That's like the seventh one. There's a cow that keeps leaving the herd with a number nine in her tail. Dry cow. Well, we kind of follow her till she comes back and then she looks back at us and she thumbs her nose at us and I'll be back, boys. And she is. So you leave the herd and you think, enough. And you run her around and you get on her tail and she's now frightened. And she crashes back into the herd. The number nine in her tail is no more. She doesn't want to see you. And you won't see her. She puts her head down, hides in the middle of the herd. You can slow your horse down to a walk. And it's so quiet and so smooth 
that now you're bumping cows with your stirrups. It's got a great deal to do with DNA, as I wrote in that second book. DNA mm. has a lot to do with it, but it's got everything to do with the ability of your horse to wait and think here. And he won't if you don't do it first. If you don't wait, the horse can't wait. You need to stop. I need my horse to go straight ahead when I'm going to rope. I need him to back straight up when I'm going to run my rope and take my turns. But if they're all over the place and I'm trying to find that spot of straightness, it has to come from still first. Then I lift. If I have to, it starts at the core. I tip up. My thighs facilitate that energy, driving it further to the back feet if it only comes so far. And it helps. Hmm. And it should be a message. It should be a signal from the hand forward. And we should ride our horses through with signals from our body. Ride the same way all the time. And so then the horse can look after their head a lot better. Okay. Seems to work. I, I think I see what you're saying. When I when I hear what you when you talk, for example, on the first day you talked about a bunch of stuff, which allowed me to think about it for the second day. Mm -hmm. This is the second day. Now I get to think about it for the next whatever amount of time when I go to work with my own horses. Mm -hmm. um, when I consider working with a horse, I often consider I often consider how horses work with horses. What do you have an I a thought or like, so one of the things is the humans are much higher thinkers. We've got a way of looking towards into the future that horses t tend not to have. And we can kind of even uh, so. I think we trick ourselves into being able to into thinking that we can better anticipate a thing, but I've never seen anything anticipate a horse's behaviors faster than a horse or better than a horse. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Does it make sense to the direction yeah. I'm going and yeah, what does. I'm trying to ask? I don't even know exactly what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, it does. But um, my horse chants. He does not need people. Oh, you mentioned that, but I didn't see that. He needs you. He, he doesn't need people at all. Yeah. Well, you go out into that pasture, and that's the one thing my wife said. You couldn't sell them to anybody. They go out there to catch him. Who's going to catch him? We all talk about, I'm going to go out there and catch my horse. That means I'm going to run him down and wrap my arms around his neck and catch him. The horse, you should have the ability to have the horse look at you and still like you enough to walk up to you. Hmm. Because I'm not running in 30, 40 horses every morning or every night before work and standing them up on the ropes and roping them out anymore. So now... I have to rely on my horse's ability to actually kind of know that there's a purpose and he's okay with it. It's good if they understand the purpose. Horse likes to know what the purpose is. They like to help human. He doesn't even need other horses except that it's nice to have somebody that he can boss around. So it's a need because he still does. Mm but he's so comfortable with me because he's got this purpose. And I've, I've, I've in the, for the most part, I've kept him out of the wreck. He's always looked to me, what do you need here? I'd like, help me out of this. Hmm. And I do. Hmm. Um, I bought this horse that was, uh, he'd been running cans and, and he was, uh, he was a nice horse. He liked to run up to people. Um, he kind of get in their way. And uh, I just, this was last fall. He's nice to shoe, he's nice to worm, he's a good guy. He uh, had not matured through work. And I brought Memphis home from doing a month east of the Rockies, workshops. And it was a lot. It's a lot for one horse. It's too much. But that's who I had. And so he came with me. He did it. I treated him as good as I could. I gave him as much fun as I could. 
while still having a boring job to do, standing in there, going from human to human, try to get this right, try to get that right. I came home and he saw this newbie come charging up. <laughs> and this horse comes trotting up to me, hey, 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 you know. And Chance came charging out of nowhere and attacked him like a stallion. I thought he was going to knock that horse down. He carved him up with his teeth. I brought the horse in and locked him up. And I got another, I got to take this horse to another workshop the next week. And I got to take Memphis with me. So I thought, well, I'll take this guy with me. I'll get them both on the trailer. They got a divider. And a, a lady who works with us, and she's a very accomplished horsewoman herself, Julie. She had, her horse was lame. Bear with me. I said, ride Chant, or Memphis. And I take the new guy. And Memphis could see me working with this guy. Is he gonna get jealous? Is he gonna get mad because he's with my partner? It was the opposite. He's seen that I need this horse for a job too. I could put him in the same pen that night and they eat off the same hay net. I have a question. You said something that triggered a thought in my head. Do horses have an emotion such as jealousy that we would frame it for a human? Or how does that, how would that work? Oh yeah. I mean, if one horse is getting a lot of attention and they're used to getting attention, they're going to put their ears back and chase them off. That. Herd, herd him off, yeah, my person. Hmm. Yeah. That Andalusian colt I got, that's the way he was. Put his ears back, he drove the other guys off. Mine. <laughs> and it's, it was cool, you know? It's really cool when you get that. Huh. And even if he had a troubled day in the pen, in the, in the arena, one day he did, he popped a cork. Back cinch bit him. It happens. What you gonna do about it? That's the issue. I went out the next day. I finished it on a good note. I went out in a, into the meadow and I thought, he may not come up to me today. No, sir. He marched right up to me. He helped me put his halter on and he went right back in that round pen and I had a great session with him. Now back to Chance and the, and the new horse because or Memphis in the new horse, because Memphis saw me, th this new horse served a purpose and his human needed him for a job. And this guy was helping his human with the job. He also had the purpose and he saw it and he's good with it. Why? Because he's helping him. He's helping his partner Miles. I helped him all summer. And now this new guy comes along and he's helping him. He's got a purpose. And he was okay with it, immediately. Hmm. That's a really good thing. Yeah, it was remarkable to see. It hmm. happened like that. Yeah. That day. Is that nature or nurture? Did you put that there or was it always there? A little both? The horse has that ability to, to like to help. Most do. Some don't. They're not all the same. Hmm. That's DNA. It's up to us to recognize it. That's why they have registrations. But I mean, it can be there. But if we want to compare it to a truck, which we understand more than horses to, the, to this day and age, that truck came with those options. It's up to you to keep it maintained or it's not going to work anymore. That's the best way I've got to explain that. Okay. If you did have a situation where he was jealous and you were trying to work with a horse and the other one says, no way, Jose, that's my human, how would you manage that? Would, you, would there be a way that you would teach the jealous horse? Well, or would yeah, you I'm just... going to kick him out and I'm going to ride this guy off to work and that horse is going to be left behind. But when I come back from work and I strip the gear off this horse and brush him down, he's going to smell sweat on him and he's going to know it's, it's got something to do with work. And they, they don't, it doesn't all happen this fast as what I explained with these two horses. Mm. 
but it does make a big difference. He's got a spot on the crew. They still got to go through the pecking order, mm. but they don't all drive him off because he's a useless baby. Mm. They see he's working and they know he's helping the human. It reminds me of a concept called Buddy Sour, where say you got, you have those two horses and you take one with you and the other one's crying from behind. I mean, a lot of horses are calling out here. Um, but it reminds me of the same concept of where how, how you've explained it, how a horse may understand, well, that guy's part of the team. I'll just chill out. Is that a thing? How do, or... Oh, it is. I mean, these guys were screaming for each other too, and he <laughs> wants to get back and visit his buddy. But uh, yeah. it, you know, they we always think it's because often think it's because um, that horse is the dominant one, mm. and we need him because he shows us the way. But often the dominant one needs him because he can show him the way, and they That's... it's their family dynamics, mm. and they do want that spot. They need that spot. Mm. How can we accommodate for these relationships? Because horses are sentient beings. They've got their own thoughts and feelings and stuff. And in training or in working, it, I can't help but ponder that. I mean, Herman and I had the exact, <laughs> we, we couldn't leave each other for two minutes without coming back and either one of them nickering at each other and being quite happy. Or anytime he left, my horse was like, I'm going too. And so I often, I, as I did that, I thought on, I guess I thought on the concept that you're trying to convey in that I'd let him go a little. And then I'd say, that's enough. We need to go back. No, that's right. No, that, that's the only thing you can do in my opinion, because it's like a work situation. And we go back to the horse that was not matured through work. They could be nine, 10 years old and still just a teenage kid. Right and they're charging around and causing trouble and they, nah this is enough of this i want to go back it's i'm sweating and this is uncomfortable and work does help them it does help them to go someplace and come home tired and very much know that they've earned their feed mm. and and i think um instead of giving them all their treats um all the treats along the way i think when a horse gets it, when he knows he's done something good, it's because you knew he did something good and he felt that. And it works vice versa too. Um, how do you know a horse knows if he did good? Because I knew. And they get it. If you just give them a minute, relax on it. Everybody doesn't have that ability to stop and wait and say, that was kind of cool. I'm just gonna sit on that. Feels good, doesn't it? That was a nice result. Hmm. And it makes a big difference. That second book I wrote about that little Missy horse, hmm. she waited. Orville gave her that opportunity to wait. Hmm. And so she waited. And I really needed her to wait when I got hung up. But my foot was hung up in the stirrup and she waited. And I really needed her to, mm -hmm. but it was already there. You can't put it in there just when you need it. Mm. You got to prepare for that. It sounds like if I were to break it down in what many people would call sort of a silver bullet, but it really is just time. Oh, sure. It's time. We have yeah. to spend time. Yeah. We can make horses as fast as we want to. We can get them performing as fast as we want to, but time and waiting for the horse's feet to go and riding when they do go. Riding over them feet, there's no comparison. And then you can feel the horse really getting it. I can't push it on the horse, he gets it and he knows and he'll be there for me. Okay, so I needed that horse to turn, a quarter turn and wait. You turn them and they're walking. You turn them and the outside hind is stepping ahead to push off. I just need you to turn and wait. Because if you keep pushing off and going forward and the outside hind stepping ahead for them to turn, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the herd. I need to maintain that road deer line. This is the turn back line. Mm. I'm getting too close to the herd. 
boss is going to yell at me and tell me go sit on the back and hold herd and get somebody else turning back. Hmm. That's how it is turning back and, and sort, sorting a herd on, you know, out on the flat, paired off cows. I need that horse to turn and, and, and roll over his hawks and wait. Just wait. If he walks off and I hold him from walking off, I'll never know what he was going to do. He'll never know if it was wrong or right, because that's all I did was hold him. What did he learn by it? This simple move itself is so important, and, and, and it, it explains fully why the horse needs to understand this and how. I ask him to turn, and if he walks ahead, give him that opportunity, but correct it if you want to call it a correction. Ask him to step back. If I turn to the left then, or turn to the right because he was used to that turn. Do it a quarter turn to the right. Doesn't need to be a quarter turn. It can be just a try at a turn. He'll probably step off again. He'll say, I just want you to wait. Do a turn again. He may walk off again and you say, I'd just like you to wait. They're a little kid. You don't throw them around. Ask him to come back and wait. You're going to ask him to turn. And I've seen some horses go as long as 20 minutes before they'll stop. But it usually doesn't take that long. A few times and they'll say, what now? And their ears are going back and forth like this. Now what? That's what I want. I need to feel for the horse and ride the horse from where the horse is, but they need to feel for me too, and they're not going to do that if we don't wait. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep you, especially now that it's starting to rain a little more and you yeah, do have to get home. might help them fire. <laughs> I hope so. This has been a great weekend. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I don't think you, I mean, I know you say it a lot, and I grasp that from your words that you feel it's incredibly valuable and oh, the value that is going to be taken forward by everybody is going to be felt for a long time but it truly is i don't think anybody hasn't looked you in the eye as i watch everybody say thank you to you and they truly truly mean it and i do too i'm very appreciative of your that sure time makes here. it worthwhile because if i couldn't get that part i can make money any other place i can go sell sure. firewood or something but that is the real i know i'm I know I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track. Yeah, you are. You know, and it's, I can still do something with horses and I'm not on the outfits anymore. I miss the outfits so much. That was my life, all my life. And there's still people doing that. There's great cowboys and great cowgirls out there. And I just, I just hope that people realize that when you're done with it, there's still something else. What I'm teaching isn't the end all the be all. Everybody that helps people is helping them some way. Everybody gives somebody a leg up. Yeah. But this is something else. And it works. And I'm excited about it. And because people are excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh it really pays forward. I would say your methodology with people is very similar to your way with horses in that I would imagine your horses feel the, as much positivity as you exude. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's troubles, don't get me wrong, we all have yeah, there, troubles, there's gonna be arguments. But, but if I just take a moment, just sit and let it be. The natural state you are in is not the, the stuff that's trouble. No. If you were to sit at rest, as all matter likes to do, your sit at rest attitude or opinion or outlook is of, this is getting better. This yeah, is it, well, it really is because I see a workshop like this and I just can't help it. Everybody here, it's gonna help somebody else. They're all gonna give somebody a leg up. And it's not just with one little thing with their horse. This is a holistic mentality. Hmm. I agree with that. Completely, which is why I was really happy to be able to sit down with you. So thank you. 
Yeah, appreciate well, a lot. It, it's it's good to have your thoughts appreciated. You know, you can keep on going ahead. <laughs> yeah, I always like when somebody says thank you to me. Yeah, thanks for that. It's good advice. Yeah, yeah. it's good to hear. I appreciate you helping pass this on. Yeah, as Herman does. I appreciate you guys' thoughts a lot, and thank you. You're very welcome. So I hope you all enjoyed that chat with Miles. I found it very enlightening um, and encouraging, reaffirming some of the things that I think he has found very effective. One of them being empathy. Empathy with horses, very valuable. Empathy with people, incredibly valuable. And my thoughts on why I think it's that. It was really nice to be able to sit down with somebody who I look up to, who I respect, and uh, I could hear some of his thoughts and some of them were the same, which was absolutely wonderful. So if you have anybody that you think well, I would be good to interview with and uh, would like to see more of these types of interviews and videos, please let me know. Put the comment in the description of that you'd like to see more or less. And if you'd like to see more, who would you like to see? Hopefully I can meet them in person. But if not, maybe an online interview would be possible as well. Anyhow, I'm very, very thankful and appreciative that Miles was able to sit down with me and chitty chat about all kinds of stuff. And uh, I look forward to going to another one of his clinics and I'll talk about the one that I went to in the next video. So I'll see you guys then.